We have a downtown master plan that which I botched in saying it was the master downtown. No, plan. no, that's no, that's okay. Um, either either way is probably fine. I just want to make sure that there's a distinction between the downtown master plan and what is sometimes referred to as the master plan, but is technically the city plan. Um, um, the entire city. Plan. That's the entire city plan. That's a, a separate document. Uh, there's a lot of work that's happening on that right now. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. So um, there's what, what kind of work is happening on the master plan? Yeah. So um, the master plan is a document that we have to have for the state, and there are different chapters that we have to have. And so many of those chapters are being farmed out to different committees. So, for example, we have to have a chapter on energy. And so the energy committee is... Um, working on writing that right now. Um, and there's a transportation chapter. And See, and when people think about the master plan, they think of the master plan in terms of zoning. Is is that portion being hashed out again? Uh, no, that, um, so there are tweaks that uh, we, um, that we are continuing to work on um, with, the, with the zoning. Include zoning? Uh, on Sabin's pasture, or is that pretty much settled? Uh, none of the tweaks that I'm aware of uh, I, could, I guess we did we did change something on Saban's pasture, uh, but it was it was to uh, bring a um, one housing density line up to match another housing oh, okay. density line. So it, so it, it was technical. Exactly. There are there's lots of these little things that we're still working on. Um, I mean that was a so, year long process. Oh yeah, that was process. significant. That was significant. It was great. Um, um, glad we're through it, actually. Um, but it needed it needed doing anyway. That's but I just want to make sure that that's a. Um, a so we're talking clear. about the recent plan. Yes. For for just the downtown. Just the, the downtown. Yes. And it's, now, how do we define the downtown that's in that plan? Well, what are the boundaries of that plan? Uh, that's a great question. Um, there's a, so there's a map, <laughs> and uh, so it includes the. Um, it includes Main Street down it to Memorial. It includes Confluence Park. It includes Confluence Park. It, in, it includes all that space up to, I think, Taylor Street. Uh, right. And That would be Confluence Park. Yeah, right, ex exactly. Um, and then... It goes to the library. Yeah, I'm trying to think what the... I can't... I don't recall what the northernmost boundary was. It included Langdon Street. Um, and so, anyway, we actually got to see some of the first uh, outcomes from, well, some initial outcomes uh, from that last night. Can you explain what those, what those initial outcomes, what the highlights of the initial sure. outcome was? Yeah, well, so they looked at two different plans um, and, with, you know, with the goal of improving uh, the pedestrian and bicycle experience uh, for, for uh, pedestrians and bicycl bicyclists downtown. Uh, and uh, and also just to you know in, increase uh, you know vibrancy and, and whatnot. But uh, so there, it was pretty clear that one of the plans was was going to be um, better in, in a lot of ways. Uh, it included a lot more trees in the downtown. One of the things I thought was street really lighting. I think it was uniform street lighting. Yeah, as well. that was one of the things. There was um, one of the things I thought was particularly interesting was uh, the possibility of a curbless. Uh, streets on Langdon Street um, to make it more of a, like a festival street, uh, I, I guess. Uh, a, that was a new term for me, but it's, I think it's obvious sort of what it means. Uh, but, you know, with this idea that um, it could, with, without curbs, uh, could just, could more easily uh, turn into a, sort of an open, sort of free um, space for, for pedestrians. If we ever wanted to go towards a pedestrian mall on Langdon Street that would allow for that. They weren't recommend weren't making a recommendation as to whether or not we should go to 100% pedestrian on Langdon Street, but it leaves that as an option. What was the final recommendation on Elm Street? Well, so let's I just want to be clear there none of this was final recommendations. Well, oh, let me rephrase it. It's okay. What was the recommendation for Elm Street? For Elm Street, um, wasn't uh, it one one way? No, uh, so there was consideration of one way on Elm Street in the scoping study that we were talking about previously, but we ultimately ended up um, not pursuing that. And I don't think that was a part of this, uh, the downtown master plan's um, recommendations either. Uh, but another one of the interesting aspects was in front of City Hall, um, having more of a plaza feel. It seems like the space in front of City Hall is not 
necessarily well used uh, at the moment, and so it was a revisioning of that uh, that space. Uh, and they recommended some permeable pavers, which I was very interested in. I, okay, I, I have to ask, what is a permeable paver? Well, okay, so uh, you could think of them as kind of like cobblestones, but they're uh, but they're not stone <laughs> necessarily. They're like a, like a brick clay um, uh, kind of thing. I, I should. I'm still learning about it myself, in all honesty. Um, I was very, I, I've been very skeptical about permeable pavement. I, I'm also very hopeful uh, about permeable pavement because it's, it's something that I, I think we, we really need to be exploring um, uh, for storm uh, water drainage. Uh, but permeable pavement has just not had a great durability in our climate. Uh, but permeable pavers are much uh, more common in Europe places that have freeze-thaw cycles like we do, and these seem to last, and there's a gap. So it, you can think of it as like a bathroom tile, I suppose, um, where, or- So the, it's got a freeze cap. <clears throat> um, I suppose so. I mean, I don't know, but I, but apparently they- So it doesn't buckle. <laughs> right, so they're not, they're not gonna be breaking up. They're not right. absorbing water themselves, but there's a gap between those um, pavers and the next paver so that water can actually I infiltrate, uh, and that, that seems like it's working elsewhere, so it's worth exploring. I don't. I mean, I, I still, you know, there, it seems like there's still some um, research to be done there. But I'm, I'm very interested. Now, what's the time frame on this implementation it's, for this one? This again, is long term, from what I gather. It's similar to uh, the um, scoping study, the traffic study that we were just uh, talking about. Again, there's a lot of elements to that, but it's going to be incremental. <clears throat> in implementation. Deal of this, um, depending on the rebuild of the, the Rialto Street Bridge? Yes, so that is actually one of the driving factors. We actually started the downtown master plan knowing that um, the Rialto Bridge was going to need to be uh, fixed, replaced, uh, because it's, it's old and needs the work. Uh, and that's a, a main artery, obviously, in our downtown. And it's going to, when that happens, when that's a state project. It's, yep, because uh, it's a state highway, yeah. uh, technically. And it is going to be a major disruption in, the, in our downtown. And so we wanted to be thinking about like, okay, if we have to, if we have to close um, the Rialto Bridge for its repair, then um, let's have a plan for things that we can be doing alongside of that project um, to increase the vitality and uh, pedestrian experience um, on the other end of that uh, that construction. Any idea when that's going to happen? Um, I would put it in the ballpark of the next five years. So um, this really is long-term thinking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it could be three years, but it's uh, because we're not that that project is not going to happen without some significant grants, um, and so we're we're sort of just waiting to see you know what the how how that works out. Um, now, yeah. this is so painful to even talk about. Yeah. A premise of this downtown plan was the parking garage. Yes. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, so there is um, uh, one of the, the hopes of this plan was that it would not, um, in, in increasing the uh, experience of bicyclists and pedestrians downtown, the goal was to not um, lose a significant number of parking spaces. And um, that was, so part, part of the planning is predicated on the existence of a parking garage to support parking for the city. Where are we? Yep, so uh, it, we are currently in, in litigation, uh, okay. it, which is to say that uh, uh, it's before the environmental court and... Uh, is there any chance of arbitration before it goes to the... To the environmental court? Um, no, I would say. Well, I mean, I, for for my part, mediation. Mediation. I, I am uh, always open to that. Um, looking to find um, a, a way to resolve this outside of the court. I think that's always best. Um, but uh, you know, we what we did we did try that and weren't able to work it out. And so so uh, yeah. So we're we're so currently this is at court. May. Sorry. May a May date for the for the court. 
Um, <clears throat> sorry, do you mean like when it would when be? When exactly? Um, I I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Um, but it's on. It it it's ongoing. So. The recreation center. Let's stay around in this neighborhood. Sure. What is what is the status of the recreation center? Uh, great question. So uh, you mean the one on Berry Street? Absolutely, the yeah. one on Berry yeah. Street. Yeah. So that uh, that building it needs some significant work uh, upgrades. Um, Are you talking about the shooting range <laughs> in the basement? <laughs> well, the shooting range lab? has <laughs> since been closed, uh, but it is um, not ADA accessible. Uh, it, ADAB. Oh, um, uh, accessible for people with disabilities. Um, and it has asbestos and, uh, it, and there's lead. and lead, and there's there's no um, there's no sprinkler system in that building. Uh, so there are why are we talking about repairing it and just not raising it if, if it's in such bad shape? So that's a great question. Um, so we did look at the possibility of um, actually selling that building and then building a new facility, but a new facility would be um, very expensive and we, even without a swimming pool even without a swimming pool and we asked uh you know folks what um what they you know um would be willing to spend tax money on and and uh they there was not a lot of support for raising taxes for a, a pool um uh, but even without the, the pool, you're saying it, it, would, pool. it would have been a, a very sizable municipal yes. investment. Yes, yes, and it exactly, and and even so, it's also a sizable investment um, with this facility. It is um, it was going to be expensive, basically e either way, uh, and so it came down to a policy question of like, would we rather find a new location or is this location? Um, advantageous enough that we would rather keep now, it. Those people, those few that don't know where this is, yeah. it's across from the senior center on Berry Street down from the church. Yes. And it, it is a historic building. I mean, it is a... a it was an armory. It, it was an armory. Uh, it, I think it is an asset to have a recreational, accessible facility downtown, um, but it needs to be accessible. Uh, and so we are looking at um, improvements that would um, would do all those Will things there be I just public mentioned. Public hearings where you'll show the, um, the yes. graphs uh, or the drawings. Yeah, so we that. already had um, one of them um, earlier. Gosh, this was in January. Uh, really to get a sense of like where the community was at with this, and that was very well attended. It was. Um, and it's on our website. Yes. Yep. It was. It was a great meeting. Um, really thoughtful questions, uh, and then. Um, and l laid out sort of what the plan would be. Uh, it's also been at council a couple times for some feedback, and that was that was also really useful. Now there was um, a discussion as to whether it was going to be on town meeting ballot. Yes. What was that discussion like? Well, so we there yeah right. So there was some discussion about you know should we try to educate the public with what information we have now uh, in time for a March uh, vote. Um, but then, it, in a certain sense, the decision was sort of made for us in that actually one of the um, point people uh, on the, um, with the architecture firm that we were working with actually passed away. And so we decided, okay, this, I mean, there, there's that um, organization still working um, with us on this project, and, um, but we figured it would probably be wise to um, not try to push for March. Are but you it's thinking we have two elections coming mm -hmm. up. We have the primary election right. in August and we have the general election in November. Yep. Which one do you think, if you had to hazard a guess, we will see a bond issue? Well, that's a good question. Um, and I, I think it actually depends on uh, another uh, factor as well, uh, which is a potential bond for um, the what's uh, uh, the the property that is next to um, the drawing board, uh, the Moat property, the Moat property, TKS, yeah. So now the Moats, just to bring people up to speed, yeah. with it, uh, the Moat Trust owned M and M Beverage. Yeah. The city swapped land for the path that goes through there. Right. In exchange for the building rights next to the drawing board, and yeah. there was a discussion 
I don't know mm -hmm. why I'm saying this. No, no, you're doing a great it. job. <laughs> uh, in exchange for the right for them to build a building, yeah. which would be the same height as the other buildings, yes. if you'll take the story from there. Sure. Um, so that project um, ended up not going through. We still were able to do the, the um, land, land swap. swap. Uh, but it's a, it's a little bit of a complicated story. But um, the bottom line is that... Um, we ended up uh, basically saying that we didn't, um, oh yeah, gosh, it's like how much, how deeply into the story do we go? Uh, the point is um, we currently owe, we currently own um, that property, uh, but we also owe the state money for that property. So we either need to sell it, which was the original plan, and pay the state back or we need to bond for it and buy out basically the state's interest in it. Um, and so if, say, we wanted it to be open space, a park, or um, some or other... Or we want to build a building. Or do we want to build a building? And so uh, we r basically this question has to be resolved this year, 2020, and so that doesn't give us a lot of time. Um, Approximately, I'm not going to nail you to a specific... Yeah. Is this Hundreds of thousands, or is this no, million? no? It's it's like a hundred and thirty. Oh, so it really thousand, is. Thousand. But when we're talking about the rec center, we're talking three point five to million. five million. Yes, yes. Right, right. So I I suspect that's very likely that uh, we may have a bond vote um, on the on that property in um, in August, and so then the question I think becomes, uh, you know, do we ask for a bond at the same time? Uh, or, you know, for the rec building, or do we tackle Wait that until as... until there's a larger voter turnout. Exactly, v larger voter turnout in November, and, uh, you know, I, I don't... It's not clear to me yet um, which the, the rec building bond will go on, so we'll see. But we think it will happen this year. Uh, I, think, I think it's, um, un uh, it's unnecessary to delay it past this year. If we were to authorize that bond issuance, yes. mm -hmm. approximately when do you think we would actually see a rec center that would be open? It's a great question. Um, so the uh, architects told us that the, um, the makeover of the rec building would take approximately 12 months. And that's a lot of disturbance um, for activities that happen in that building. And so, uh, just to, to follow the timeline, um, I, I'm, you know, projecting out here a little bit, but uh, so let's say we had a bond in either August or November. Um, that would probably mean that we wouldn't start to see work actually being done um, for at least probably six to eight months after that. Um, but so then, we're talking 2022. Yes. Uh, right, it, exactly. 2022 is, I think, the soonest we would see um, the, uh, the facility totally done and open. Now, let me ask you an unfair <clears throat> question. Okay. Will there be houses on Sabin's pasture when that thing opens? Um, well, uh, would I like to see <laughs> housing on Sabin's? Yes. <laughs> well, you would have answered that in 2013. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and I, you know, I, I think there's certainly the, the possibility um, but you know we'll we'll see. I think that uh, you know plans so plans like that take time to develop. But that's a long time in that particular case. I mean, well, so even with uh, you know the possibility of um, of a developer, uh, if if say there was a developer who's interested now, um, it w it would still take um, time to to figure that all out. Do you think we'd see challenges as we see challenges on the parking garage? Um, I think it would depend on whether whatever was designed for that space was in uh, the same spirit as um, the, the plans that were developed um, some years ago with the, together with the Friends of Sabin's Pasture and, um, and what I think is, is now actually reflected in the zoning. Uh, and so I think as long as it's, it's kind of, you really can't plan something against the zoning and I, I think that really does capture um, what part of what that agreement really was? So I I think it it has a, has a better shot now um, than it perhaps it would have in the past. Now let's come back into town. Are we going to see anything next to the distillery? 
Do you think we'll see development on that side of the well, street? Well, I know there's been talk about that, but I, I'm not aware of anything um, The Montpelier more Development Corporation. Yes. Could you discuss? We've lost our third, yes. we've lost our third director through yes. no fault of our own. Yes. I, I continue to believe that it has value. Um, and, you know, to be fair, um, I, I think this most recent switch of theirs to a different type of model is actually going to be more flexible. So the new model that they're moving towards is away from having a single executive director, but instead hiring um, project managers for specific projects. So, you know, thinking about the places in Montpelier that could use some development, um, is there, uh, you know, someone who could step in to help, um, you know, to, to help uh, all the, the stakeholders uh, move through the process? And that would uh, allow people with different types of expertise to step in at the right moment. Um, and, you know, as, as project uh, managers and so I, I'm eager to see if that uh, works. I, I think it has potential. Is Council ready to target them, help them to target uh, the area, the strip commercial area on two over um, in District 3 that they could use some sort of economic development help? Uh, well, I mean, so I think what we... It's, it's the sister, it's the, it's the very little sister to yeah. our downtown. Yeah, right, it's sort of a different, um, diff it's almost, yeah, it's, it's not... It's a different character. It's an, yeah, it's a different character, it's an economic, uh, you know, area, but it's, but it's not really part of the downtown. And, you know, and it doesn't catch the attention that downtown yeah, catches. No, I agree. Um, and, it's, and the thing is, too, I mean, the way that the council would communicate that is potentially through, like, the growth district or through the TIF district. Um, and it's not, uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's in either of those. But Montpelier Alive really can't tend to them because right. that's not their charter. Right. But I think it's interesting. I mean, um, Bar Hill being a, a hub out there, uh, that end of town anyway, uh, I, I think, and, and especially together with the bike, um, the, the shared use path uh, extending out to the edge of town now, I think there's going to be some new opportunities for that end of town. Uh, and I'm really interested to see what happens there. And in fact, one of the places that I'm very interested in is um, uh, what we call Five Home Farm Way. Um, which is I have no idea. What no, that is. that's okay. Um, there's uh, it's, it's actually the first. It's supposedly uh, the first uh, building home. It's the first oh, home right, right, right. built in Montpelier, uh, and so it's n you know next to Agway right. and what Cascade. Was, what was and, out there? Uh, well, was so it was two rivers. It was two rivers. Right? Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of land associated with that, and it's it's interesting because the bike path, the shared use path. <clears throat> excuse me, um, goes uh, basically uh, right to, you know, that, that part of the world. And uh, I think that could, has the potential to be a great destination um, for walkers, bikers, um, you know, uh, people out with dogs, that sort of thing. So can anyway, I, a lot of potential there. Can I stay there. On, <laughs> on that same street? And sure. Can I, can I go east? Sure. All the way past Main Street, can I head towards Dog River and towards the treatment plant? Yeah. Now, when we spoke last, <laughs> yes, you were selling bonds for, for that. Yes. Well, so the bond passed. Um, that was $17 million, <clears throat> which is a lot of money. Um, but actually, uh, what has happened since then is the... Um, that project has actually gotten multiple grants and low interest loans. Which um, you were hoping for when you were on with last me time. selling yeah. your bond. Yes, and those uh, came through, uh, which was very exciting. Uh, and so that means that the, the project is going to be uh, able to be basically cash positive much sooner, um, which is just really exciting. Plus that <clears throat> that building is that it means that the facility will be able to be thermally net zero, um, basically from the methane that uh, is emitted from the, the waste that it collects. And there's going to be a substantial um, excess amount. And we actually just, the council uh, heard 
uh, about the plans for what we would do with the excess. We knew that there would be excess, but we didn't know what it would go towards. An excess of what? Methane? A an excess of methane and energy. And so the question is, what should we use that now for? Now we're lighting that area around and powering this plant from what it's generating. Yes, and exactly. So now the plan is to um, generate electricity with the excess and sell that back to the grid. Uh, which is going to make that plan um, cash positive, at least for the, for the you know, phase now we two. Have cust we have pers prospective customers for this. Yes. It's not speculative. Right. No, it's being constructed right now. Uh, yeah. It's and we have all the permits for wastewater that's going to come out of that potentially. In yes. Um, and we've recently... Um, I, I realize this is a little tangential to what you're uh, talking about, but we um, were just notified that you know we have um, some concerning levels of PFAs. Um, PSAs being PFAs. Um, PFAs. Oh, I'm not sure that I can recall the acronym. It's a nasty chemical. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably like I would guess it's something like perfluoro. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, whatever. But. Um, uh, but so we actually are, are going to be learning more about that at the next council meeting. We're going to have a report um, from the folks at the Water Resource Recovery Facility, um, and I, it's something that I think we're going to be taking a harder look at in the near future. Now we've got a capital investment coming, not in this budget, but in the next budget, we're picking mm -hmm. up a fire truck. Oh, I I had didn't look at it at bill, that. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good bill, bill question. I didn't yeah. see that. Um, I've, Which I've would had, be quite quite costly, but it, yeah. over a long horizon. Well, it will and so pay that would be itself. a part of the equipment plan. Exactly. And um, which is a part of the overall capital uh, plan. So and there so there's a schedule. Uh, just so people are aware, there's a, a schedule of replacement for all of the um, city vehicles, so that we're not ever you know buying n you know new police cruisers all at the same time, right? So it's, it's sort of staggered, um, which, you know, makes sense fiscally uh, as well. Uh, so uh, if that, if the equipment plan is relatively stable, then, you know, that it often doesn't get much more look than that. But uh, one of the other things that's notable this year in the equipment plan is that we are buying a hybrid police vehicle, um, which I'm very excited about for the, um, carbon emission reductions, uh, and particularly because um, police vehicles idle all the time. Um, they, they, it's just a part of the policy, we leave them on. And so to have a, a hybrid vehicle that would not be emitting carbon while it was uh, stationary, even if it was technically on, uh, is, uh, is a wonderful relief. <laughs> Boy, it seems like you and I have gone around and around this town. Is there yeah. any other project of note Oh we gosh. Touched well, on. I I mean I think it's it would be remiss of us to not just to not note that uh, within the last year since we last spoke uh, doing this, uh, we completed the the transit center. Um, that we did. That was a major project. Uh, took you know 20 years, and now we and have. Hopefully, Greyhound will incorporate it in their schedule yes. in the next 20 years. Yes. Yes. Uh, but it also, you know, increased the amount of housing in the downtown. People are living there now. Um, it's it's just it's such a wonderful um, plot of land now. It's it's just a delight. Um, so I'm I'm psyched that that is complete. It's not complete until the old golf sign at the corner of Taylor <laughs> and, yes. and Main yes. Street comes down. Yes. Well, that's uh, you know we'll we'll have to see what ends up happening in that property. I'm excited to see that be developed. Or a new zoning ordinance that, that would take care of those old decrepit signs. Potentially, yeah. And I really thank you for sitting through this long slog tonight. Happy um, to. Congratulations on becoming mayor again. Thank you. And yeah. I thank you for being here. Thanks so much for doing all of these interviews, Richard. It's, it's really wonderful on your part that you do this for the city. So thank you. And I thank you for watching this. And I urge you, as I said at the beginning of the show, that before I ended this show, I would ask Anne about her office hours. Oh, yes. So my office hours are uh, Tuesday from 3.30 to 4.30. Do you have to make an appointment? Or? At City Hall. Um, I have not gotten to the point where people need to make an appointment. Um, they can just show up. Uh, but I, I uh, do try to limit uh, my conversations with any one person to about 10 minutes so that if there are more people waiting that they uh, they get their time but um, we can also 
potentially shift to have like more of a community group conversation. Uh, I'm, this is, I'm still new to it, so you know, we'll let it evolve. And I do thank you for watching the show. And I would urge you, as I urge always, watch all the shows. Yeah. They're really good. All of the candidates are interesting in their own ways. Bill's show is good. Libby's show is good. And the more you know, I think the better off you are. But make sure that you get out and vote. And I realize you could say to yourself, oh, nobody's running against each other, except for in District 3. Uh, but it's still worth voting, because voting is the bedrock of our democracy, which is your participation as well as ours. Yeah. Thank you for watching.